Wait, is it going to tell us? Okay. Tell us? No, we're live. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Hey, Nicole. Hi, Hi Elizabeth. <laughs> I love your bright red background. It totally matches your personality. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Perfect. Awesome. Mine does not reflect. Yeah, no, it really doesn't reflect your personality at all. <laughs> uh, but you got the lipstick going, which does. And no. the earrings. Oh, guys, we already have some people who are watching. I love this. Awesome. Okay, well, guys, we're super excited. We are here. Um, <laughs> we're here for the first episode of... Comment, guys, let us know the key. Nicole, you there? Yes. Awesome. Was to yours that are um, no, really, no, really, huh? Okay, so we're without Nicole for a quick second. Technical difficulties never fails. She's coming back. Okay, you're back. Yay! <laughs> um, I mean, definitely our first one, so there's that. Um, but anyways, so I was just that we're so excited. Um, our vision for doing this podcast is we really want to um, highlight women in the industry, in the real estate industry, that are badasses, boss babes, um, that are doing really awesome things. I mean, I feel like a lot of the top men or the top people in the industry are men. And so we would love to have um, women, all different types, um, you know, it could be investments, it can be um, doing traditional, I mean, whatever you're doing in the real estate industry and, um, you know, mastermind. I mean, this is going to be a great platform to talk about things as women, you know, we handle things differently, objections, <laughs> and the way we run our business. Um, so we're really excited to do this together. Yeah, we're so excited. And Nicole and I run a very different business and we're both more so on the traditional side. But like she said, this is not just for traditional real estate and it is here to be collaborative, to help women grow their business, to go through and be real with what our struggles are, what we're going through, what's really working um, and really be a platform to highlight women as well as all of us continuing to better ourselves and grow our business, um, maybe our, per per our personal lives, but really professional. I mean, I think it kind of all ties in together, right? <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. We definitely live an integrated life. That's for sure. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Well, to start us off, um, Elizabeth, why don't you go first and say, um, I know we're not going to talk too much about it, but just for the people on my page that maybe don't know you or I'm um, on your own page that aren't paying attention. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know how they could be. I post every day, but okay. yeah. But, um, I'll, I'll get to what your role is. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I am in traditional residential real estate. Um, I've been licensed for about three and a half years now, and I run a team at Keller Williams Dallas Preston Road called the Good Home Team. Um, I've been with them for just over three years, had my three anniversary with them on October 1st, which is exciting. Um, so guys, I started in this uh, not knowing what to do, really thinking business would just come to me because I was, thought I was just so charming and was going to be a natural at it. And of course, I, yeah, yeah, I'm a salesperson. So I thought when people knew I was licensed, they would just come to me, which didn't happen. So um, when getting into this, I was the least queen of my office, picking up leases left and right, doing everything but lead generation, really trying to work that social media game before I had any business to back it up. Um, yeah. And honestly thought about switching brokerages. Luckily, I found this mastermind where I heard people, uh, what they did when they were getting started. Um, and Nick and Austin happened to be there. So that was really my second exposure to them. My first was Austin selling out a lease from underneath me, which I don't forget still to this day. Um, and, that's, and that's how we connected. So, um, you know, luckily I ended up seeing that they were hiring um, and actually they were hiring for a part-time ISA position. And I was all in on this business before I even uh, was licensed. So for me, I was like money, like I had none because I came down here with the savings and I think I killed that in gas um, <laughs> alone in DFW. Um, and so I was thinking, awesome, let me go surround myself with successful people and learn what they're doing. I'm professional enough to not ever call your business for my business. And right, I told right. him that and he was really confused. And he was like, why don't you just be a buyer's agent? Um, and I had been on another team before for a week, just wasn't the right fit for me. And so really I was not interested in the team route and said, 
uh, yeah, yeah, like I'll consider uh, being on a team when really I didn't mean that at all. Um, but came on, joined them day one. It was the right fit. Um, even though at that point I was thrown in a room by myself and there was no training, no standard, no expectation. We've come a long way since then. We'll get into that later. But um, started with them October 2015, had three closings by Christmas of that year. And then in 2016, um, you know, their top agent at that time had six closings in January and I had none. I had one lined up for, no, I had one in January and she had six and nothing lined up for the rest of the year. And I wasn't okay with that. So I just figured out how to start putting structure and discipline on myself and how to grow this, of course, with the help of them. Um, and uh, within my first year, really on that team, outproduced their four-year agent. Year two, became the leader of the team. And then from there, um, I'm still leading the team, kind of run our Houston expansion. We are expanding in Tarrant County. So I'm actually in our Arlington office right now um, and continue to grow there. So we're always looking for talent. Um, but that is my quick story. There's a ton of details in there, but I don't want to bore you guys with that today. Um, Nicole is frozen, guys, for real. Episode one has just got to have its issues, right? I'm texting her. Um, but yeah, so three and a half years in, in real estate, um, running the sales team and looking to continue to grow this empire with these guys, I guess. Um, and I know this is boss babes, but I do work with two men who are awesome and then eventually grow into more real estate investment as well. And so we've got a lot of connections in that world. And we're going to be talking about that when Nicole gets unfrozen. And hold on. She's coming back. There yeah. she is. I can hear you. I'm like nodding my head. <laughs> here's what this is let me let me be real with you because i work at dpr this is our our proclamation to get better internet connection at our office so that we can be productive with our business and productive uh with our social media game as well um let's see she's coming back guys I appreciate you guys over here with uh, with the comments, letting us know when she's in and out, just so because she can hear me. You're back. I can hear everything, but we can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> I told him it's episode I'm one. Literally, I'm literally episode. nodding my head. I'm like, uh huh, uh huh. She's yeah, like, yeah, Elizabeth. That's her story. That's her story. <laughs> you know, I, knew, I knew that you couldn't hear me when I was like saying stuff, and you kept talking, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I'm just talking over you. Okay, well, while we've got you, Nicole, let me hear your story because it's pretty awesome and it's definitely different than what I do. Yeah, fingers yeah. crossed. I'll let you know. So when I, so I wanted to be, I've been wanting to do um, something like this for, I mean, a little less than a year. And um, that's what you said about have, us having completely different stories, which means we have completely different perspectives on why. And I love the one thing about Elizabeth that I was, I've always been so drawn to. I mean, obviously on a personal level, we're friends. Um, but something that I love about her is your hustle. And like, I love that you're like, Hey, I'm all in. We, and you're so alike with that. Cause we are all in on everything. Yeah. And uh, the key honestly is the structure. Right. And so a lot of people, I mean, in real estate in general, they lack the drive um, but if they do have the drive, they're so lost and they're wandering around because they have no idea what to do, you know? So that's what I definitely love about you. But as, as far as me, a quick version, um, I've been doing this for nine years. Um, I've, been, I've been licensed for nine years and I specialize in short sales, which is not a secret. Um, and <laughs> She's a short sale queen. Yes. Um, so I started off um, at an REO brokerage, which is a foreclosure brokerage. And um, I was uh, working with asset managers and it was absolute craziness. Um, and when I got out of it, I decided that I wanted to do traditional real estate. And my first listing was a short sale. And I'm like, okay, awesome. And so it was, it was such a blessing. I mean, clearly it's what I'm supposed to do because I kind of just fell into it. And I was like, I can utilize the knowledge that I have with uh, this background of knowing how banks worked and operated. Um, I, when I got into business, I was so freaking lost. I, I knew that I had joined a team um, and I was like, I'm not working with buyers. I have no idea. What, like I knew, I knew so many complicated things, but I could not tell you what a sphere of influence was. I couldn't tell you 
what the paper, I mean, I can tell you anything like that. I could just tell you like, okay, look, this is what you need to do with asset managers. This is what you need to do to get things stopped. Like, so all of the really complicated stuff that people on day in and day out don't normally encounter. Um, so I knew that I wanted to use my knowledge um, somehow in my business. Um, I just didn't know until I did my first short sale. So I've been doing it ever since. I've done um, over four, 500 of them. Um, honestly, don't even know at this point. Um, <laughs> but we, you know, I, the biggest thing is, you know, I wrote a book about it, uh, Short Sales Uncensored. I've read um, it twice. <laughs> yeah, I love it. I even like screenshotted it. And I'm like, look. Um, I was just reading. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the whole reason why I wrote the book and why I teach classes and why I do all of that is, is I'm really big on education um, because there are so many misconceptions on, um, I mean, and you're, you're the same way, of course, but on the traditional side. And for me, it's, you know, the more we know, the more we can educate this consumer, the sellers and the people that are in those situations um, who get really bad advice all the time. And there's not that many. And I mean, even when I went to go write my book, it was one of those things where like as a woman, as, you know, a realtor, as a person, I mean, you're so vulnerable, right? Because you're just like putting your stuff out there. So I had no idea what was going to come from it. Um, but I, it was one of the best things I did. Um, I basically extended off the two hour class that I teach um, and just went into to really big detail. And it's a very short read. So it's a very easy read. And I always say, I'm like, nobody wants to read 300 pages on short sales. No, um, but here's the thing is having read it twice and knowing you, it is you. Like, it's not yeah. a ghostwriter too, guys. Nicole literally wrote this. If you know her at all, you can hear her in your head, like reading you the story. I don't know reading that. Book. I don't know who says that. <laughs> <laughs> Even Tommy, he was like, I heard you the whole time. I'm like, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's getting sassy with me right now. Like, I can think that yeah. when I'm reading this. And like, the all, the, the, when I ever do all, um, all caps, it's because I'm like, hey, look, like that's and you can hear my voice. <laughs> so um, I am not a writer. So it was one of those things where there there's still grammatical errors in there. There's like four people that uh, proofread at the oh my god, it's amazing content, but you missed the I'm like, you know what? Did you understand it? Was it good? Okay, great. A mission accomplished. <laughs> So it's already published. Why do you have to let me know that anyway? <laughs> I know. There's no way that I'm going back to write anything else. So I'm done. Like, <laughs> I, I, I probably read that. Like if you, if anyone ever considers writing a book, it is the most mentally exhausting thing ever because when you stare at something so long, you're just like, I'm done with this. Like, I don't even care. Like there are times where I just close my laptop. I'm like, I'm not doing, I'm not publishing this. this is How long did it take you? Forever. Um, well I had, um, no, I mean, when I had the actual idea, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to do it. And then like six months later, I was like, you know what? I'm going to give myself um, a deadline. And so for me, I'm very like goal oriented. I'm very, um, what we're going to talk about today, intentional. Um, if I give myself a deadline of like, okay, I have to do it by this date. Like that's all I think about. That's all I work towards. Even if and it's the night before, it's going to happen by that date. And I finished the day before. <laughs> <laughs> So I told myself, I'm going to do this. This was last year. I was like, I'm going to do this before the end of the year. Like in the beginning of the year, I want it to be published. I want to be on track. Um, so December 29th is when I finished. I love it. I love it. You guys really all should pick it up. We'll put a link below in the comments after we get off here with where you can go find it on Amazon. Uh, it's great content. It's not that expensive at all. It's like $7. Um, yeah. And then it's Nicole talking to you about short sales the whole time. Pretty much. And please, books. please read it so that you help your clients properly. <laughs> please. And if anything, it'll give you the understanding of, okay, I know what to say, you know, and as, as most agents, um, so I actually looked like there's been over 700 people that have bought it, which is crazy. Yeah. Which more than one person bought the same thing, but 700 sales. So most people that read it, they're like, I'm just excited that I can, I understand how to talk to these people. Um, yes. I know how to identify it so I'm not wasting my time as an agent and I know how to actually keep a conversation going and not sound you know like I don't know what I'm talking about so right if, if anything it'll do that it'll, it'll I love be, it so. yeah it absolutely will it, it definitely helped me like I'm just now getting into those in in my career and uh, I'm definitely like I said I've read it twice and I've used it as a resource so that I am educated like Nick's got a lot of experience with that but for me it's the first time going through it really hasn't been my focus in the past it's coming up more and more and um, obviously I come to you because we are friends. Other people should probably just maybe refer them to you or use your book as a reference. Um, but so there's that. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, so let's talk about um, the trend. And so what I love is that we, in our conversations, um, the trend is kind of very similar, right? And it's all about with our businesses, like living intentionally. Yeah. Um, and so for me, it started, you know, I came over to KW because I'm like, I need to be around other people that are doing these, you know, 50 million, $100 million businesses that understand and get it. And so it started at Megacamp, right? When we heard John Maxwell. Oh, and, you know, I love him. You know, Elizabeth, we're sitting down and we're like, did you get that? What did he say? Yeah. I'm like, he's so, if you've ever heard John Maxwell speak, I adore he's him. He's so funny. He's so he's funny. funny. But he also doesn't care anymore. He's like, I've yeah. been in his life where he's like, he sits on the stage, he's like, I got this. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is my show. I've been doing this for so long. Like, like, do what I say. Don't, either way, it's the same to me. But yeah. this is some good advice you should probably follow if you want to be successful in life. Which I'm pretty sure he did say that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so it's so awesome, so refreshing hearing him talk um, because obviously, you know, at Mega Camp, which is the Keller Williams, um, you know, big camp uh, here, um, you know, nationwide. And what I loved about it, of course, it wasn't real estate, right? It was about our, our personal lives, but history, like we said, is so integrated um, and balanced will probably be a whole show. Oh, right. <laughs> Trying to figure out how, how to balance your life and your business and all that. Um, but what I loved about it was how he how we talked about living intentionally and how, you know, we settle for the lives that, you know, that we live every day. So you can either choose to live this way. Time's going to pass anyway. So you can either choose to live this way um, or you can just go and, you know, juggle a million things or whatever. And so for me, it, in, in my business, I've been trying to hire intentionally, um, you know, oh. intentionally. On the clients that I take, um, intentional about my goals, about my block time blocking. I mean, just it has literally translated into every part of my life. And it's funny because when you when you take apart your business and you're trying to grow and you're trying to scale it, you're like, okay, oh my God, sometimes you just have to start all over. And I mean that's what I did. And I'm like, okay, now I have to take all, everything out and be intentional of how we do this. Um, you know, how we're communicating everything with clients, everything. And so um, I love that. We're doing the exact same thing. And so guys, I know this sounds really great. Also the way we're saying it, please know like right now I'm in the middle of doing all of this. So I don't have it all figured out. I know Nicole's going through it as well. Um, we just had our 2019 business planning for my team last Friday and we had a coach come in, uh, coach Wayne Salmons. He's fantastic. He's actually my first bold coach at KW. Now he's got his own coaching company. I can connect you guys if you need it. And that was a big talk. It was about mindset. It was about being intentional. And he has this epic life strategic planner. And I, I think I noticed for me, and I'm sure you would agree. And I think, I think a little bit that this is more of a woman thing sometimes, but I think that anyone in a leadership role, this can easily happen to. Um, I realized I was so concerned with everyone on my team and their goals and trying to make sure they hit it. And then uh, everyone in my family or friends and everything like that. And I had this moment last year, actually, and I was like, oh, as someone on my team said, what are your goals, Elizabeth? And I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't speak um, clearly. I can't clarify <laughs> that. Um, it's very yeah. general. And someone actually called me out at that at Mega Camp. And I was like, it's, it's not because I don't necessarily know. It's because I haven't taken the time for myself to be truly intentional with writing down my goals and right. and knowing then strategically what is my clear path on actually how to hit that and uh, a really good friend of mine Lindsay uh, Knight told me she was like you she was talking about me and Nick but she was like you guys are so entrepreneurial and you yeah. run so fast and you run so hard and yep. and if you had some structure with that she was like it, it would be unstoppable it would almost be scary and I was like you're so right about that. And I, that was really cool to get that outside perspective because I think there's a part of us that pride ourselves so much on being entrepreneurial, but now I'm trying to not just be an entrepreneur and I'm trying to be a business owner and be business minded. And so I'm putting, I'm putting structure to that. And so that is getting clear with intention. That is getting really clear with my goals. I'm in the middle of doing the strategic life planner. It's something I'm going to do once a quarter. And there are things I'm going to be doing daily on that and reviewing weekly on that. And I think keeping that presence uh, not to plug another show I do, but I also have another podcast called Power Hour with Power Players. Guys, I just interviewed David Osborne on that on Monday. And yeah. go like to minute 20 or something. We only have like 40 minutes with him. And he talks about how he writes down his goals. And this is someone who 
owns hundreds of properties, owns numerous market centers, ours being one. And he looks at his goals every single day. And, and that's how he makes sure that he achieves him. And he says he's never met anyone more intentional with achieving his goals than him. And I believe that. And so he, in that podcast though, gives you a lot of tools on how to live intentionally. And um, so I'm in the middle of going through this planner of writing it down. There was this checklist and it had, I don't know, 12 different categories, spiritual, financial, relationships, music and entertainment. I mean, it went as deep as that. And it was like, put a yeah. scale of one through 10. And so when I went through it in my head, I'm thinking, well, surely all my business is like a 10 or not a 10 because I can always think I can do better, but it's going to be higher up than some of the other things. And I looked right. and I was like, oh, that show me my priorities are very, if you were to ask me, I would have said something different than I wrote down. And, right. and I think it's because I took the time to look at it and to write it down. And, and when it comes to hiring, Nick and I got very clear. I run that side with him. So that's why I'll reference him a little bit in this, even though I'm the boss babe and he's not a babe, <laughs> but um, whatever. <laughs> I wasn't sure. That's awkward, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we had to get we had to get really clear with our business planning. We looked at how many people we hired, how many people we retained, and then how much production they've done. And that was a huge eye opener for us too. So now we're getting very clear of what are our core values. And we've got three core values that we really believe in. And if you only meet two out of the three, I don't want you. I don't have time for you. And and that's I don't mean that to really sound negative or anything, but it's getting getting really clear because we are all three and um, I can't forget who we are. And that doesn't mean this person's not talent. It doesn't mean they're successful, but it means they most likely won't find their success with us. That's been the hardest thing because we are closers here. So even when I don't want someone, I'm sitting there in that interview and I'm trying to figure out how to close them. And we almost always do. And right. it, it never fails, but to backfire. Like this is really awful, but there was even some person we interviewed and right after we interviewed, I was like, no, 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 he's coming on board. And we were both like, do we want him? Like, should he be here? <laughs> we were we were in competition too. And so that's just a very true failure uh, or an honest, vulnerable <laughs> moment. What? It's, like, it's about winning at that point. Like, it's, I got it's, this. It's, it's, okay, so like that. Competition is one of our core values. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, I think the key though, Elizabeth, is what you said, is that you are – very clear on what that is, right? And so a lot of times as, as salespeople, it's so easy to, um, you know, just go, right? Like keep moving forward. Like, you know, we are 100% are in. And for me, like I have no structure, like I thrive on structure, but if I have no structure, like I'm just moving forward and I just keep going and I'm not really moving forward and I'm gonna keep getting those listings and my agents are gonna keep going. And what I've learned over the last year, because I think the longer, um, that you have a team like specifically like a real estate team like you understand like like as you lead like they're gonna follow your lead right and so for me I was running my team as a salesperson for the longest time right and I'm like what the hell go sell a house why is this so hard like oh I'm, I'm swamped right now go sell a house <laughs> like so I know you understand is it's it's not like that and so you know, being intentional of who you have by your side and, you know, that have the same core values. Um, we just uh, shadowed uh, Lance's team in Houston. Oh, yeah, and, awesome. Oh, they're phenomenal. I mean, it, even to have the opportunity, we literally spent the entire day with this team. And the one thing that they were all saying in different ways is that they have one thing. Mm -hmm. And so it goes with you know, Gary Keller's that you focus on one thing and you, you don't spread out. Well, I probably am the biggest, you know, that's probably my biggest thing is because I'm like, okay, we got to do this and, and going along with you. Like, I think the end of this year, you know, I'm trying to start over for 2019, but this whole year, I don't even understand where it went. Like, oh, I can't right. believe, I can't believe it's almost over. <laughs> so I've just been in survival mode. Like, let's come on, let's go, let's go. You need help? No problem. Let's do this, you know? And that's just, you get into that momentum and you're never going to be in so intentional if you don't stop and take a look at your entire business. And, you know, as, as women too, like we're also emotional, right? So let's talk about that. Like men can, you know, kind of separate Wait. that. But I'm like, no, no, like I get just as excited as I get, I, I go up here and then I go all the way down here. And so I have to keep moving forward. And so those are things in 2019 that I am being intentional about is 
hiring to make sure that everyone that is in my team and in my staff, that they're like-minded, that they have the same values, that they are you know, just as excited about the vision and actually showing them what the vision is. Because I think that's another thing too, that's if you don't portray that, they're not gonna understand you know, why we're all working right. so hard towards the same goal. Um, so it's, you know, failing forward is a thing. Oh, 100%. <laughs> that is my life. And I'm totally, and I'm okay with it um, as long, typically I'm okay with it as long as I'm still always moving forward. And so I just, I never want to stay stagnant. Yeah. I never want to go backwards. And, you know, going back to kind of the one thing, like that was our theme a little bit was uh, for our business planning was, Kiss with intention, which is kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. Uh, <laughs> and then be intentional with that. And it's exactly what you we were overcomplicating. Like to for these agents, we 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 talked about this actually with this guy named Chris Suarez, who runs an amazing team. And he just talked about we chase complexity so much and keeping it simple. Um, like even when scripting, we're on we're getting over, we're being done with saying this is this script for for this type of lead, this is this script for this type of lead. These are just conversations with people. This, we're just talking with people. Let's just practice how we're gonna talk with people and what kind of questions we need to ask. And let's practice our listening right. skills, like as like children or something. Um, and then let's have very clear strategies for uh, for our main sources of business and let's double down on those. And then where are our areas that, you know, that we can go and um, build upon more so that are areas of opportunity essentially. Oh, I heard you there for a second. Um, what I like Lance and talking to. Can you hear me? Yep, you're here. The, okay. <laughs> um, the one thing that I love talking about them is that. Um, are we allowed to curse? Yeah, <laughs> it's our show. <laughs> can, I, can I curse? You? It's like public. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. Well, a little. Sure. Oh. But um, okay, well, guys, we're just gonna be real. I mean, I love the fact that they're a shit show on a bigger scale. Oh yeah, because <laughs> it makes me feel better. Like you know, everybody is so worried about looking perfect. Everybody is so worried about image. Like I have got it together. I am, you know, perfect. And six months, like, no, screw that. I am a shit show, and I am just figuring it out with everyone else. And I'm the first person to be like, hey, we're figuring out this together. And like you said. Keep moving forward. Oh, it uh, didn't work. Okay, like yeah. we're not going to be defeated, and we're to have defeated, people, we're not going to dwell. Yeah, right. And that all goes down to mindset because you can easily sit there and be like, "Shit, I just spent all this money on my business," or "Shit, I just hired this person and it didn't work out because they ended up not, you know, being in line with what I need for my company." Or you can move forward and say, oh, "I'm not going to make that mistake again," and you're helping people, you know save that money and that cost and that experience by telling them what I did, don't do that. And that was, was so refreshing sitting down and you'll notice all the top producers, they are all like that. No, they and all are. Once you, once you actually get one-on-one, -on -one, we're the same yes. way. I have so many people who are like, you guys, your team, cause we're a pretty big team. They're like, you guys look so amazing and you sound so amazing. And I'm like, we sure do. Like this podcast is about to be very real this entire time of everything we go through because I growth is messy. Success is messy. And I, and I want people to know that it's more than what you just see on social media. Now, don't get me wrong. We're not lying. We're not inflating our results. I'm just probably yeah. not telling you how hard it was to get to those results. It's like that. It's like that um, image where it's like that rock and you just see how pretty it is and you don't see everything else underneath where you are exhausted and you're up till two in the morning and you just lost $10,000 because you screwed with this or you just, you know, I am starting over and hiring all new staff. I mean, there's things that people feel like they're alone on and you know, it's again, it's defeating. And so it's amazing to talk to other people and that are willing to talk to you and tell you, I totally get your shit show, been there, done that, learn from me and my mistakes and do it this way. So right. I think that's so important. people don't see the value or they need to see the value of learning from other people, which is the whole point of masterminding. And hopefully we can, you know, bring some of that. You know, totally. Authenticity it's it's to the power of the network. It's the, and that's why you and I network so much. We're going to a networking event after this, even though we're both in different offices about to run appointments and then go meet up <laughs> at a networking event because it's so, it's so valuable to have that time and, 
I would say you and I are both really good. You and I are both little social butterflies when we're out there. But I don't know about you. That's something I didn't value enough in the business when I first got started. I would almost be like, oh, like, because I'm not a, I love networking, but I don't love forced socialization. Um, yeah. And and I would really downplay it and be like, oh, I don't want to like go and drink the Kool-Aid and, and get too involved. Like, that's kind of lame. No, it's not at all. Like meeting these yeah. people. And I mean, I'll say it. I paid $2,000 earlier this year to go to a mastermind. That was amazing to be with other women in specifically the realm of real estate investment. Like I invest into that. And these are people who all live here locally who I could have probably very easily sat down with one on one if I really wanted to and pick yeah. their brains. But that, those two days, like that was, it was so crucial. And that's exactly what we're looking to do here is this is the place to get real, the place to get intentional, the place to fail forward, be vulnerable, um, and then just grow and kick ass. And we are going to cuss. So, I'm going to come out and look for really good selfies, but it's oh, not yeah. all rainbows and sunshine. And, and there are days where it's like, oh my God, why do <laughs> it's really refreshing to talk to people that go through the same struggles, but most importantly, understand and have the mindset that they're keep moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking at the comments while you're talking, Cassie, like I'm, I'm probably not, she said, I'm probably not telling you about how messy it is because I'm on to the next thing. And you're like, right. yep. like take a second, you know, let it go and move on. I mean, yeah. that's literally how you do with it. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so what else are you guys doing to be intentional for 2019? Are you already, are you already acting like it's 2019? Oh yeah, I'm done with this year. I'm done mentally. <laughs> um, oh yeah, I said. You know what's so funny? Like when I write things off, like you can tell it's just because I said I was putting November or December closings on the board, and she's like, it's October twelfth. Like I was like, oh yeah, the October's not done yet. <laughs> but um. My agents um, for 2019, we're doing things so much, you know, so much differently. I mean, that's honestly, so there's two parts of my business, short sell side, which is all that I do personally. Um, and then I've got my agents who are doing all of the buyers and, and helping people buy, sell, do all that fun stuff. Um, so it's definitely a lot because I'm running the short sell side of it, but I'm also running the team. And so it's a lot of moving parts and, you know, add two kids, single full-time mom on that and so you're just kind of like okay I'll, I'll sleep when I'm dead um, so all the single moms I, I get it um, full-time single mom so absolutely right. no help so it's it's exhausting and but I mean at the same time um, so back to what you said because I'm completely going off on a tangent um, in 2019 uh, we do have um, the numbers that we want to do like we've, we've done pretty much doing the same thing uh, we have changed a lot of the structure of the team like for yeah the you guys have yeah you've a added lot. structure Yes, that, there you go. That's the key. <laughs> um, well, you know, when we were at the other company, um, we were number one for the last couple of years and which is fine. But when you get to a certain point, you cannot keep scaling, uh, running them. And so that's why I say that, like, that's how I was running my team. Cause that's how I run my business. And so, um, it's definitely been a huge change, but I mean, it's been a great change. I mean, it's the best thing that we ever did. Um, so it was awesome to sit down with Lance and to kind of see how they separate with their ISAs, with their buyers agents, their listing agents, um, how they're running the team. I mean, he's a, a, a visionary um, and he is a just do it type of person too, but he's also a numbers guy. And so he's already, it was crazy. I can't even wrap my brain around the fact that he's planned until 2030. Like, oh, I know. Whole he knows. Planned until exactly. 2030. Yeah, he I'm knows exactly who he like, needs to hire, how much he needs to do. And because of his model, he knows exactly how much business and production he can expect from every agent if he brings as many people. It's insane. It's crazy. No, it's insane. I'm like, I've got 2019 done. Does that count? No. Right. Okay. So, um, I mean, yeah, his, their goals are like a billion dollars of revenue, not sales. Because, you know, that that's a great, you know, good. You sold a billion dollars. That's phenomenal. No, he wants to make a billion dollars. Yeah. And, it was just, it's so awesome, like, talking to them. And, and you know what? The buyer's agents, they're, like, smiling from ear to ear. And me and my agents were like, are they smoking? Like, <laughs> what are, what are they doing? They're just are you so, so happy. happy. <laughs> they have all this, you know, work balance. They have, like, all this stuff because they've, they're in a position where they're doing their one thing. That's it. Right. They're doing one thing. Everybody else is taking care of this. You know, someone else is taking care of this and I am doing this. And so I think 
you know, that whole being intentional of like this on and I'm going to thrive on, I mean, that has made them so successful. So being able to take that away, we kind of all took away different things, but um, in our planning for next year, I mean, that's something we definitely want to heavily focus on, which means I'm back to the drawing board, hiring people so that I can stick to my one thing. Oh, right. No, that's really good. You know, for us, we broke it down really clearly for our agents. And so we've got this team goal. Um, and I'll put it out there because it's better. Y'all can all hold me accountable to this. We're going to go shoot for a hundred million next year and double our business essentially. Um, and so we have that path, but what we really learned is my agents don't care right now about hitting a hundred million as a team. Cause what does that mean for them? And so then we broke down what their path looks like in order for them to all hit their goals, make more money. And then that in turn leads us to hitting our goal as a team. And then we got really yeah. granular with that so that they know on a daily basis what they need to do. And that's come in and set one appointment a day. That's not run one appointment a day. That's set one appointment a day. And so breaking it down to that is something A, they can control because you can go knock more doors. You can make more phone calls. You can do more open houses. You can uh, do go to more networking events, whatever it looks like. And so it was being really clear and once again, keeping it really simple there. And then we're hiring to that. You know, we have definitely gone back and forth with hiring of like, do we bring on someone who's got a pulse or like, do we get really specific with who we're going to bring on? Um, because we used to have this model where Nick and Austin would just hire anyone and they couldn't get rid of the people. Like they couldn't get rid of them to save their life. And now it's like keeping people to stay. And what we realize is, well, there's more teams around now too. And um, we, we have expectations now we have standards now and that's not something that they really have then which is why these people just kind of st like stayed with us and hung out and um, and so we're getting really clear on meeting our core value but more importantly besides like for us hiring to our core we've talked about this the power of the network who you surround yourself with matters so much and so this gets back to being intentional so I want to do everything in my power to at least control. Like I've got, you know, my core group of agents who have been with us who are producing uh, and who we're going to continue to build up and, and help them go for more and more and bigger and better businesses and lives. So we've got these great core. I want to do everything I can to make sure that when I'm bringing people in, I'm surrounding you with the best people and I don't want to risk throwing that balance off for you. And I did that this year to them, unfortunately, by not sticking to who we need to hire and by having other people in our world who should not have been there who were not raising the the level of conversation or they just ultimately they weren't a value add does not mean they were bad people does not mean i did not like them but it is not who i need to when we spend so much time together in that office working on our businesses i need to be very clear of who i'm surrounding them with too so that we can all hit our own personal goals and the business goals and so that's where uh, a really big focus is for us is growing that but now it's less of this concern of let's get 25 agents in it's like no maybe we only need three to four more agents like truthfully we're always hiring so don't take that as if we have hired three more you can't come talk to us but um i'm just throwing that out there okay nick called me out the other day that my eyebrows were moving a lot and i see that in here <laughs> side note but it's, can you hear me yeah i got you okay good <laughs> um but it's it's quality people. It's people that are, like you said, I mean, you're with them all the time. And not everybody's going to be a good fit. Like, you guys have a phenomenal team, but it's not going to fit any agent. It's going to be a very specific agent. And so that's another thing, like you said, like, do we just want somebody to breathe? And, like, for the longest time, it was just, you know, um, somebody's like, how do you tell a drowning person not to just hire anyone? Right. How do you tell someone that's drowning that they have to wait and go through this whole thing? It's so hard. And yeah. I, I totally get that because when you're drowning in work and, you know, you've got all of the client, it's hard. I need help. Just go sit at the chair and then do you not be that good, but do something, you know? Right. And so it's, and it makes it's definitely hard, but if, you, if you're wait. more intentional with doing that and you take the time to. Well, yes. my cousin, my cousin broke the to me. I mean, yeah. And that's she broke it to me this year. I was sitting down. She used to be a recruiter and I was like having that moment where I'm like, why isn't this going well? Obviously I wasn't hiring right. And I've learned a lot about that this year. And she looked at me and she said, Hey, sometimes they're just not that into you. And I was like, oh, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> like that was, she was like that movie. She was like, you wouldn't sit and take any of this on a date. So why are you going to do it in your business? And I was like, Oh my God, you're so true. And I was like, 
But what if they're like pure talent? She's like, if it doesn't match your business, it doesn't matter. And because what will kill Nick and I is if we lose someone and they go to another team, like, hey, if they were to even go to your team and then they're going to be really crazy successful, I'm going to be like, no, like, look, we passed on that person. But that person may never have found that success on my team, actually, because we are all like teams are different. Cultures are different. There's so many reasons people thrive. People learn differently and they all have different personality styles. And that all plays a part into it. So um, that has been something we're getting intentional about. And Nick and I literally high fived each other yesterday because we both just interviewed two people and did not bring them onto the team. Uh, but I think they are interested in the brokerage. And we were like, yes, we didn't just hire them. What'd you say? What? Oh, hi, Nicole's gone again. Um, oh, you know, I, oh, I'm like hating this. Okay, well, someone is watching. Out. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can oh, hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're, you're here, you're here. Can you hear me? How many ways can I tell her yes? <laughs> okay. Okay. So, um, but uh, well, now the moment's <laughs> uh, moment gone, but I was said about not hiring anybody and Sometimes, you know, they don't like it and, you know, in and out, but anyways. Um, so one thing I want, I want to pull up Brittany Washington's comment on here. So she said, she calls it, we okay. kinda, I was just looking at the comments. Right. Um, I call it the, hybrid, HG. the HG real estate is so easy that it really you have to. Yes, that happens all the time. And I think that's yeah. probably because it's such a low barrier of entry. Also, everyone sees everything on social media. And you think that it's, um, you know, it's not that difficult. And the truth is, it's simple. It's just not easy. And once again, we all chase complexity. So we probably do make it harder than it has to be. Um, what I want to say to that is um, yeah. there are, that happens so much. And so please never get out of the business before coming to someone like myself or Nicole or even another team who has the infrastructure, who has all of the leads for you, who's got the training, who's got the support, please give us the opportunity before getting out of the business. Because not to be negative, but I want to be real once again, is um, everyone's going to have a moment where they probably think about leaving this business because it's not actually as easy as as it seems. So know that that's normal. Yeah. And then if, if it's staying around and you're thinking of leaving, please come talk to a team. However, don't just give me two weeks with like, that's all you have left in your budget to work with because I can't work magic. Um, but definitely start talk to teams and make sure that you give them the opportunity um, before you get out of this business. Um, okay, she's coming back. Girls here. I had to, well, I, I was commenting, agreeing with you and you don't, I know that you can't hear me because you're, you don't stop. <laughs> but, okay. Um, yeah. So anyways, no, but I agree with you. I mean, to Brittany's comment, you know, um, there's nothing about real estate that's easy. Like it's a lot of hard work and a lot of people don't understand that. I mean, and there is like this image. I mean, when I used to mentor, I remember I used to get agents and they used to say, um, I used to ask them, why did you get into real estate? It was always my first question just to kind of see like where their head was at. Um, and a lot of people would say, or a couple of people would say, I'm like, well, you know, I love looking at Zillow on the houses and, I um, love watching HGTV and the, and I was like, if you came into real estate to open doors, you're going to hate this job. You're Although I'm always it. looking for a showing agent. So if that yeah. is why you got in, call me. <laughs> That's what I was like, if you just want to walk around and do whatever, I was like, because if you're a good agent, the client doesn't see the amount of work you're doing behind the scenes. The client doesn't right. see the, you know, to each end that you go to, to try to make sure that they have a great experience, no matter what type of transaction it is. So um, yeah, it is. It's a lot of education because people and that's why a lot of times we have to show our value because even the public has no idea how much we do. That's why they're constantly trying to take, you know, cut our paycheck. So, right. Constantly. And maybe we do need to show them a little bit more what we do. I don't know. I go back and forth on that. Um, I'm like, let me explain something to you. Let me break it down. Yeah. Let well, me I, mean, I definitely don't need to show my value on the short sale side. So. <laughs> <laughs> Small side. Let me go ahead and explain to you. You know, right, right. So um, anyway. awesome, guys. Okay, so I guess if we're gonna leave it with anything, the theme for this, the theme for our lives, for especially this next year, is living intentionally, and we intend to be very intentional with this podcast. So, um, 
every Thursday, 3 p.m. We're gonna be bringing on other boss babes with us. Sometimes it'll be just Nicole and I. Sometimes we will have amazing guests on this show. We've already got a few people lined up, which we'll uh, leak to you a little bit later who's gonna come on. But just, uh, you know, people out there who are killing it, failing forward every single day. Um, and, and I think the biggest thing is that because me and Elizabeth, we kind of already touched about this, is that we just want people that are gonna be authentic and say, look, this is what I've struggled with. And this is how I'm moving forward and how I built this badass business. Um, and because I think there's enough things on social media that are too, um, it's defeating of like how perfect it is and amazing and this, and it's like, okay, yes, what we do is amazing. And that's why we keep doing it. Cause we're so passionate about it. Um, but by the way, I took all of this to get there. Right. And if you're in that stage, whatever stage of life you are, you know, if you're just starting your real estate business or if you've been in it, or if you just want to start, um, I mean, it's, it's going to be a great content of people that have been there, done that. So let me throw this out there. If you're watching this right now. Okay. Let me steal a line or two from Nick. This is me being really good with podcast. If you're watching this live <laughs> comment L, if you're watching this on replay, comment R, but I guys, to start with that. I, I do. I do think I was supposed to start with that because hopefully people are still watching to the end. Um, but please share this. Most importantly, tag people below that you would want to see on this, who you're curious, who you want to open up their business and, and you want some, some insight from them, some coaching from them. Um, yeah. We will have different kind of content every single week, especially as the different people we bring onto the show change. Um, but let us know who you want to hear from because ultimately we're, we're doing this for you guys. We're doing this for ourselves as well, just to uh, continue to grow our own businesses and uh, get us in touch with other amazing ladies out there who are rocking it in real estate. So Please, we would love to hear from you of who you want. Absolutely. Um, and so every Thursday, 3 o'clock, you're going to see our pretty faces and hopefully other awesome women. Um, and we'll see you then. So thank you guys so much for joining us. And I'm sorry that my internet sucks. I'm just going to sit next to Elizabeth next time. So that <laughs> <you'll hear> me. <laughs> and then we'll both have a red wall behind us. And <laughs> yeah, uh, no, we'll definitely first episode. Thanks for bearing with us with that. We'll get all the internet issues figured out. And we can't wait to see you guys again next week. Bye. Have a great Bye. rest of the day. Bye.